Good afternoon, counselors. I'm here with James Talley. James, will you introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, hello, thank you for the invitation. I appreciate it. Um, again, like you said, my name is James Talley. Uh, right now, I'm the, the school guidance counselor at Zachary Taylor Elementary, located in JCPS. Uh, this is my second year at, at Zachary Taylor, and that's my fifth overall as a school counselor. Um, before becoming a counselor, I was an elementary school teacher at Slaughter for four years. Okay, great. Awesome. Um, how are you taking care of yourself and your family during this time? I know you've got you've got two young ones. Um, it can be a challenge. Um, like the majority of people, um, it's been a learning curve. Um, my wife is an essential employee, so I pretty much stay home with the kids uh, while she's out working. Um, I try to get out and go to the grocery and things like that, but we try to keep consistent schedule as much as possible. Um, in the morning, I work with the kids. Um, the school work the academics between nine to 12, something like that. Um, I, and then I try to answer a quick question with an, uh, with an email, uh, like with my phone or something like that. So that way, if I can answer the question, try to stay on top of it as much as possible and not be as bombarded in the afternoon when I get to my work. You know, we typically eat lunch together and then um, finish uh, responding to emails. Um, and then I start to begin my phone calls to families, check in on students and uh, do some problem solving things uh, that may require a little bit more attention than just a quick email or text. Okay, so I think that's really great to hear um, because I think right now we've got a lot of school counselors, a lot of educators that are really struggling with that balance. I'm struggling with it myself, um, but we're trying to be you know, great parents, great employees, um, and sometimes we struggle with you know, feeling like we're not doing as good in one of those areas. So what I hear you say is family is priority um, mm -hmm. and, you know, get to work as, as much as possible and, and when you can, um, but certainly you're you're making sure that your kids have everything they need, you're, you're establishing that routine, um, and then you're also checking in with your families from school and your school community. So that's, that's wonderful, thank you. Um, how are you taking care of your school community during this time? Um, I try to take care of my school community by staying connected. Um, again, this is challenging times for everyone. So in order for us to feel others feel like they're not alone, it's to stay connected with us by email or by phone. Um, ways that we stay connected are meetings through Google Meet, um, through phone calls, providing lesson plans, um, providing words of encouragement sometimes. Um, sometimes that's what a teacher wants to hear. You know, they they are doing an excellent job and they need to be um, acknowledged and let them know, let them let them know they're doing an excellent job. Um, but above all, um, keeping that communication piece and listening to their needs. Um, I'm the lead administrator for the kindergarten team, and uh, we have weekly PLCs via Google Meet to address their needs. Um, we discuss updates, create lesson plans to address academic standards. Um, we meet as a school staff, school staff weekly um, to discuss updates and the everyday concerns or topics throughout the district. Um, we have weekly admin meetings by Zoom, Google Meet, to gather the most up-to-date information, discuss school budgets. Um, we still have to do that for next year. Right. Um, and we have to go ahead and conduct interviews to fill upcoming positions. Um, we have to, at ZT, we started a Thursday evening social. And so we meet on Thursdays, either via Zoom or Google Meet during the evening, just to kind of let loose and kind of share stories and cut up um, during this challenging time. So um, important. I, I love that. Yeah. So, I mean, um, Mr. Roberts is our principal, and I think he kind of get um, he took the idea or borrowed the idea from uh, his wife's school. And so they so we we kind of in, um, took that on as well. Um, OK, but uh, nothing yeah, wrong so with borrowing ideas. That's why we're doing <laughs> no. that. So other people can borrow your ideas. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's um, so, yeah, but just communicating by phone with families daily and and try to accommodate their needs and provide resources and assist them any way I can. That's that's how I'm trying to be there for the school and for all stakeholders with parents and students. Now, as an elementary school counselor, obviously you're starting those phone calls with parents. Do you ever get to that to that child level where you're, you're able to, to say, hey, Johnny, how are you doing? And, and that kind of thing, or, or is it mostly conversing with the parents and just checking in on them? Um, that is the ultimate goal um, since we're, it's all new. Um, like with the first week or two, that's what I was doing is calling parents. But what I want to start incorporating, which I haven't done yet, is some small groups. We can meet in a Google Meet where I can meet with students 
And so to see how they're doing and checking in on them. I know that our mental health counselor, he's been doing a little bit of that already, but I wanted to go and take on that role as well. Um, now that I'm kind of, now that the teachers and everyone is kind of getting the flow of the NTI instruction. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. Um, so James, you came highly recommended from your district. What are some ways you go above and beyond as a school counselor, um, not only during this unusual time, but just during the regular school year? Um, it's all challenging for all of us right now, but I don't, I don't think I'm doing anything different than what the majority of the councils are doing in JCPS. I think they're, we're all working hard. Um, I try to reach out to families. I try to listen to their needs and do the best that I can to meet those needs. Um, I think the first thing, though, is just to, to reach out to families and then, and then listen to them. I mean, it's kind of like students, you know, they want their voice to be heard. They want Absolutely. their needs met if we can. And so um, I, I, that's what I try to do at first is just communicating with the families and, and understanding the situation and uh, finding ways to problem solve can go a long way. You may not always be able to solve the problem, but listening to them and knowing that you care, you know, that it, it's a big step and it lets them know that you're that they're not alone in this. Yeah, I think acknowledging people um, and, and their needs is, is got to be the number one thing that that you do that will um, help create positive relationships with families. And like you said, even if you can't always meet the needs of a, of a family or a student, um, as long as you're trying and you're working towards uh, some of those goals and, and working towards those positive relationships, I think that's going to continue to go a long way. Um, mm -hmm. All right, so let's, let's finish up with this. Um, do you have any advice for school counselors in general, um, not only during this, this, again, unprecedented time, but just, uh, you know, when they're back in their brick and mortar schools? Okay. Yeah. The, well, the only advice I can kind of give everyone, I'm sure they've already heard it before, is, is uh, just to create a schedule and try to do your best to follow that schedule. Um, this job and the worries can, can definitely overwhelm you um, if you let it. If your schedule states that you're available from nine to five, try to stick to that time frame as much as possible. Make time for your family and yourself. Go out on walks, um, do puzzles, play games. Um, I play my son sometimes in NBA 2K. We play a little bit of that from time to time and a little smack talk, you know. So it's just, and it's just making memories with the kids. Um, this is challenging for them, challenging for everyone. So just making sure that you are taking time for your family as well as yourself, you know, when you're also working with others. Um, and I think that would just and, – and then considering others along the way, it just – it's – like I said, it's challenging all the different, you know, scenarios and in the, in the, in the pandemic and so just like I said considering others along the way and their needs and their Absolutely. voice yeah I love that you talk about NBA 2k I, I recently had somebody tell me you know this this time will go down in history and and you know our kids are going to remember this as a historical time and so how are we going how do we want them to remember that time with us do we want it to be a time filled with stress or do we want it to be a time where we got to play 2k with our dad or we got to do a puzzle with our dad or our mom um, you know we want to make those those fun memories that they can um, they can carry with them james thank you for your time today man i really appreciate really appreciate it. I appreciate all that you do, um, not only during this time and, and with this interview, but uh, during the school year for your kids. All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. And thank you for reaching out. Absolutely. Take care. Hello, counselors. I'm here with he Heather Haynes. Heather, can you introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you. Good morning. My name is Heather Haynes. Um, I work at McFerrin Preparatory Academy. I am a professional school counselor for the intermediate grades or grades three through five. Um, before that, I've worked it with early childhood, um, various other uh, elementary schools, middle school, and I started my career teaching high school. Nice. What high school was it? Moore in, okay. in Shawnee. Okay. Moore cool. in Shawnee. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thank you. Um, so I ran into you just a couple of months back um, at your bullying prevention night um, where I was a panelist. Uh, tell us a little bit about that night, how you've organized that, and um, just any, anything else about the your comprehensive school counseling program that um, others might find really interesting. So um, we are blessed. 
I am blessed to be able to work with a, another counselor. We have two in our building, which makes it absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, that makes it good to have people um, to, to feed off of each other's strengths and weaknesses. This is my first year at McFerrin, so this is an event that started prior to me getting there. So I just really assisted, I think, um, the FRC, who was instrumental in working with my partner. Um, they had a formula, and they knew what they wanted to do. This year, I got trained for um, Oveus, mm -hmm. so it's just natural um, that the three of us will continue to work on bullying prevention. However, you know, we're just waiting on um, guidance from the district in regards as to how to roll it out. Right. So, uh, um, I let me interrupt that. you for just one second. Um, yes, for those listening, Olveus is O L W E U S. It's a bullying prevention program. It is free and it can be provided by Kentucky Department of Education if you are interested. Okay. So, yeah, it's an amazing program. It's an amazing program. So, we are just waiting for guidance from the district in regards to rolling it out. And I'm pretty sure right now they're waiting to see what's going what's going to happen with uh, school in regards to planning but sure. um you know my partner and i have, are always thinking about our bullying program um and one of the things that i think is very important is to teach um, parents especially what bullying is if someone is mean to your child once it's not necessarily bullying and we did learn some really good things at the Kentucky School Counseling Conference as well. And one of the acronyms that we uh, use with our students is MOO. And this is something that we learned at the conference. Was it mean? Was it on purpose? And did it happen over and over? And once you say MOO, the students are able to understand you know, they get that visual representation yes. of a cow, and Love then that. they remember mean over and over and on purpose. It's really, really good stuff. Thank you for sharing. Um, the thing I so loved about the get, we always get good stuff at the the conference. Yeah, it is awesome. Yes. Yes. Um, KSCA just put out a um, a supportive video for students last night, um, so uh, they're doing some awesome stuff. Um, so shout out to them. Shout out to KSEA and, and the conference, which should be happening either in person or virtually in the fall. Um, one other thing that I love about the bullying prevention night is it seems like, you know, many of our parents, uh, all of our parents want to want to be as supportive and, and loving as they possibly can. Um, but many of them may not have the tools in their tool belt to, to be able to handle different mental health issues. And I think that that night helps them understand just so many different mental health issues that their students can be coming home with um, and kind of gives them some of those tools to uh, to be able to, to identify some of those ways that they might be able to help. Um, and, and now they know how to reach out for help if they need to as well. So um, I told Lauren when I interviewed her, that's one of my favorite nights of the year. So I appreciate uh, being able to be a part of it. Thank um, you. We love having you. <laughs> Thank you. Heather, how are you handling this unusual time as an elementary school counselor right now? Um, this time is, is difficult for everyone. Um, me as well. But the, the thing that um, I want everybody to know is that I want the students to know that it's okay. I want our teachers to know that it's okay. Um, and I wanna make sure that our admin, our admin has been very stressed with making sure that they're able to connect with our students virtually. Yeah. So just let everybody know it's okay if you're stressed, it's okay if you need to walk away from the technology and we are here to support them. Um, I believe our building has a culture of strong relationships and um, 
even when I get frustrated um, because I am working on my uh, level of knowledge with technology, I am able to walk away and do the techniques that I teach the students to do, do some deep breathing, get away, listen to some calm music. And what we are trying to do, my partner and I, we're trying to make sure that we are that support for everybody. And it's so funny because when we finally see everybody's face on a Zoom meeting, we're like, oh, we get, you know, so happy and we're looking at pets and we're looking at houses and we're like, go get your kids and bring them in the Zoom meeting because we really miss each other. Yes. So um, it's a difficult time for everybody, but to help everybody understand that it is necessary so it's necessary for us to stay apart. So when we are able to come back together and look around the room, we don't have anybody missing. We don't have our students missing. We don't have our staff missing. Our families are all still together and there. Um, so even though it's not easy for all of us, it's necessary because when we come back together, I want everyone there. That's such an important part. Thank you for saying that. Um, and what a great reminder of how as school counselors, you know, this is a time where we we have to be there for for everybody. You know, it's not it's um, certainly that our students and our families are at the center, um, but we still have to look up. We, we have to look after our staff. We have to look after our admin. Um, and I love that you're modeling mindfulness in your own in your own work and in your own life, um, because I think that that's going to trickle down to your students whenever you get back with them. Um, all right, so your partner, Lauren, has mentioned uh, that you've done some really cool things with Google, um, particularly during this time. Can you tell us a little bit about um, about that? Yeah, well, yes. Um, our school is very strong, as well as our district, in using Google for everything. Um, it was a bit of a learning curve because I have been using pro Office products for 20 plus years. I use Microsoft PowerPoint when I was teaching back in the 90s. So it was a bit of a learning curve, but luckily I've been able to collaborate. Um, there have been some wonderful video tutorials. Um, we have a wonderful counseling leader, Dr. Searcy, who has provided yes. some exemplar models for us to use. We have a wonderful small group that we meet with um, we start off meeting once a week of counselors, a small group of counselors, our, our uh, leader group. We start off meeting once a week, and then we um, meet, met right now we're at every other week. Among the exemplar um, models that we were given, some of them were from you, Dr. Sweeney. So your um, guidance has helped us a lot. And then a lot of it, I've just been um, just you know, trial and error. And then I will have, um, we have a technology team that is helping us in our building, which is consists of the special area teachers, the STCs, people who are really good at um, technology. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So every time I try something out, I will bounce it off of them. But um, also to try to use Google to try to reduce the amount of paper and record keeping has been something that we've been trying to do all year. Awesome. Um, as, I, as I told you earlier, our parents um, suggested that we use more technology, and that's been something that we've been working on all year. Right. And you said that your parents suggested that when? Through our advisory council. That's right. That's right, which is extremely important for our counselors to have. Remember that the American School Counselor Association um, suggests that you have a student or a, an advisory council, a counselor advisory council, um, minimally twice a year, but you can glean a lot of information from um, parents, from different uh, community members, from students um, that can really help you grow your comprehensive school counseling program. So that's awesome. All right, Heather, um, I'm going to end with this one final question. Um, what advice do you have to other school counselors, not only during this time, but, but you know, even when they return to their, their school buildings? Um, what advice do you have generally for, for school counselors? Get connected. <clears throat> get connected, get connected, get connected. Um, our district is very good to where we break down. We have about 90 plus elementary school counselors 
We break down into groups of about eight. So that is our go-to group if we have any questions. Even if you have a counselor who's a friend in another building, just ask them advice. And if you're in a small community and you are the only elementary counselor in that community, um, what I would do is get connected to certain groups on Facebook. A lot of my technology ideas or resources, I'm connected to different counseling groups on Facebook, and they are always saying, hey, this is wonderful for our students dealing with this. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. And yeah. also get connected to um, ASCA, get connected to various school counseling blogs, but connect with somebody that you can um, bounce your ideas off, you can use as a resource, or even somebody that you can just vent to. Um, when you have a student that's having a, a argument over a pencil, that you can vent and kind of sort through um, the things that are going through your mind. So get connected, get connected, get connected, because that's what we do as counselors. We connect with other people's people and build those strong relationships yeah such a is such an important point we often because of the many hats that we wear we often feel like we're on islands and it's so important to know that you're not the only one um, fighting this good fight um, that there are other people that are that are doing the same thing that are struggling with the same things that you are and um, it's so important to know that you have other people that you can go to when you get stuck um, so I think that's great advice that you um, work with a small group or you work with your regional educational cooperative. Um, if you need help getting connected to w with other counselors, you can always come to me. Um, I think that's awesome advice. Um, we've got so many different Facebook pages. Uh, we've got the Kentucky School Counseling Association, as you mentioned. We've got ASCA, um, which is the National Association. We've got the Kentucky Counseling Association. So um, there are so many different ways to get connected, um, but you got to take that first step and reach out. All right, Heather. And that's well, thank you. To have a partner. I'm so yeah. happy I have a partner. Yes, you were blessed. We, um, we, do, we do it on spot in the middle of the hallway. We will collaborate right then and there. Absolutely. And you've got, uh, as you mentioned earlier, not only do you have an awesome school counseling partner, but you've got an incredible Frisky. Um, your principal yeah. is super dynamic and awesome. So, um, and, yeah. and then, you know, you mentioned also one of my very best friends in the entire world, Dr. Searcy, who was, who was amazing as well. So, um, so you got Love a lot of resources. Yeah. Love her. Yeah, Love she's her. awesome. Love All right, Heather. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you for your time this morning. I really appreciate you. Well, thank you for talking to me. It's nice talking to you as always. You too. All right. Take care. Have a great day. I'm here with Lauren Clark. Lauren, will you introduce yourself, please? Hey, I'm Lauren Clark. I'm an elementary school counselor in Bullitt County. Um, this is my 15th year as a counselor. I have 11 at my current school and four when I was in Tennessee. So I've been at schools that had 650 kids and I'm currently at a school that has 150 kids so wow yeah awesome okay thank you um how are you handling being an elementary school counselor during this time this super <laughs> unusual time <laughs> <laughs> um it's really challenging um because my whole purpose is having relationships with the kids and when you don't see them it puts a strain on that relationship um but I'm trying to find ways to make connections with them. We Zoom with the kids, third, fourth, and fifth graders that have um, connections with technology and are comfortable using that. Um, I've handwritten notes to our little kids, to all of our students actually, but just trying to, to make you know connections with the little ones. Um, I have Google Slides, daily Google Slides that families can access that some of them are lessons, some are just, um, you know, mindful moments and things to remember um, that helps them in these times. Um, it, it's hard. I think there's days where I feel purpose, like there's not a purpose um, for me and what I'm doing. So I try to find things I can control. Um, so I'm, you know, organizing my lessons and <laughs> doing some PD. Trish Hatch, Trish, Trish Hat, I believe is her name. She has yeah, some free amazing. right now. So yeah. I'm trying to utilize that time to, to improve my practice so 
Okay, good. So there's always time for a school counselor. You're very needed um, during this time <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, but I think it's awesome that you're also looking towards the future and, and improving yourself and growing. So um, I think that's great advice that you can give um, other counselors. Now you talk about Google Slides. So are you are you kind of treating that as like a flipped classroom where you're talking over those slides? Um, there are some read alouds, but it's not a daily. I don't want to overwhelm them because they are doing right. enough work. So it's just kind of tidbits that they would get from me if they saw me every day, um, but not necessarily more work, just kind of helpful social emotional learning opportunities or daily reminders. Okay, love that. Um, what do your kids, what do you think your students and your families need from you the most right now? Do you think it's just those quick little daily reminders? Do you think it's check-ins? Um, what do they need from you right now? Um, it really varies. Some just need some consistency. So, you know, little check-ins are good. Um, those students that I was working with a little more closely. I've tried to email back and forth with them and their parents, um, checking in on situations that might have not been stable to begin with, um, just to make sure that they're safe and have what they need. Um, so it really just depends family to family on sure. what's happening. Now, with those potential tier three kids that might be in unsafe situations. How have those check-ins gone and what advice might you have for other counselors? Um, I, for us, it's been pretty well. I've been able to make connections with them through email or Zoom, the ones I've really been concerned about. Um, and they have seemed to be in good situations or in a better situation, you know, just for the time being. Yeah. Um, but our family resource coordinator, I talk with her every week and we, I mean, she's still doing some food deliveries. And so she's able to put her eyes on some families if I have concerns, so. Gotcha. Now, um, one of the original reasons that um, that we wanted to connect um, is because we were at OVEC at the Ohio Valley Education Cooperative and um, in a session and you talked about your collaboration with your Frisky and your school social worker. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, it's, you almost have to have a good working relationship with them, um, but they are both on my advisory council and we have, our whole district has um, attendance PLCs this year. So we meet once a month to look at our kids that are becoming truant or falling behind in attendance. And um, I have worked with them on targeting students that need some assistance. And I've done a small group. We have small group counseling with some of those um, kids that really need it. I focus more on third, fourth, and fifth graders because the younger ones don't always have control over, over that attendance as much. But it was super beneficial. I was able to use some data to show how we improved things. Awesome. Um, so. Okay, so what I'm hearing you say is that you're a data-driven counselor who collaborates with your family youth service center coordinator, your school social worker. Um, you do indirect services by um, working on student attendance, so that's fantastic. Um, and then you do your direct services, of course, with the actual students and, and um, interventions with them through small group counseling. Awesome. That's incredible. Um, <laughs> now, one thing I've been preaching this year as I, as I um, travel, have traveled the state is um, the new standards and, of course, also um, being able to reflect on your comprehensive school counseling program. And one huge facet of that program is an advisory council, which you just mentioned. So can you tell us a little bit about yours and how you were able to kind of set that up and how it's going? Um, well, it's a long time in the making. I've been going to trainings on comprehensive school counseling programs for years and just said, oh, that's too much. I can't do it on my own. Um, so I just went for it. Um, if you wait for the perfect time, um, for me, the perfect time was a year where we had a worldwide epidemic. So it's never perfect. Um, but I just wanted to really highlight what we had, especially with Senate Bill 1. I didn't want the school counseling programs to be overlooked because of what we already had in place. Um, I am not one to promote myself. And so it was hard to realize I'm promoting the program and not me. Um, so once I got to that point, um, it was pretty easy and I just went for it. 
Um, I asked, I kind of handpicked who I invited to my council just because I think I'm the first one in our county that's done that. So it's not something that's already established. Um, so I asked our super assistant superintendent um, who had been a counselor um, in years past um, to be a part of it. Um, the school board member that represents our district. Um, a school resource officer who is also one of our community members because he would have a couple of different perspectives he could bring to the table. Um, two teachers, obviously my principal, the school um, family resource coordinator and also the district social worker. Um, and I had two, two parents I also invited specifically because I value their input. Um, they're not just yes people. So they would definitely give me their opinion on what they think is working or needs to improve. Um, and that's, that's what that's I was great. looking that's for. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Somebody that's going to give you real feedback that can help grow your program. That's awesome. Um, what have you gleaned from those those councils? I'm sorry. So can you say that again? What What have you What have you learned as a result of some of those advisory council meetings? Oh, it was eye opening because I just assumed everybody knew what I was doing because we're always together. Um, but I just created some slides and basically started. What is a school counselor? Um, the history of school counseling, just briefly, um, and then went through programs that they would see coming from the school counseling program. Um, I went through my weekly curriculum map, like I get to see the kids once a week. Um, so we went through lessons that we do. I went through small groups that I do. Um, just basically giving them all the information of what my program is. And I just assumed they would already know all of this. But <laughs> at the end, I was like, you know, what kind of feedback can I get to help improve this program? And what can I do to help improve what we're doing for school? And they were just like, wow. Yeah, <laughs> Honestly, yeah. it's been a lot of good conversations. And the parents sat and just said, how can we help you? It wasn't me helping them. It, they wanted to know how to help me and so that was really eye-opening just because they could see that it was important to to our school and to our families yeah, i think that's so good um i think as you started this this um, piece of the conversation you talked about how you don't like to self-promote um, and I think that many counselors are in that in that same boat. We don't really want to brag about ourselves or all that we're doing. We just really want to do a good job for our students and our families um, and our staff. Uh, but you also then talked about how, you know, this became really about the comprehensive school counseling program. And I think that a lot of people, when they think about school counselors, you know, there's that that go to phrase that we don't we don't prefer anymore, which is, well, when my when I was young and I had a guidance <laughs> counselor, um, this is what my guidance counselor used. And of course, we again, we don't use that phrase, but we've also evolved as a profession. So I think it's really, really important to share what our actual role is and how many different hats that we wear. Um, and I think that it's important for other people to understand um, the full just volume of work that we have. Um, so um, kudos to you for getting that information out there and for having those conversations. I yeah, I definitely included the um, like a year long calendar that included things that weren't necessarily school counseling related that fall under my you know hat of what I'm responsible for. And so they could see it's hard to do everything that I'm responsible for, plus those jobs. And sure. so that was good for them to see that all together. All right, well, thank you. Um, Lauren, do you have any final advice for school counselors, um, whether it's school counselors working during this time virtually or just when they get back in their, their buildings? What advice do you have? Honestly, um, don't feel like you're in this alone. Network with people in your district, network with people on Facebook groups, um, just find other people that are doing the same thing. And definitely and in the state, ma'am, and in the state, yes, at the state level course, too. <laughs> yes. um, and get involved with the state organization because that's so yeah. helpful um, very much. to do that. Yeah, all right. Um, guys, thank you for, for watching. This is Lauren Clark. Lauren, I appreciate your time today. Thanks, Damien.
Good morning, counselors. I'm here with Lauren Zakim from Jefferson County Public Schools. Um, Lauren has been a great leader at the elementary level. She works at McFerrin Elementary School. Lauren, will you just introduce yourself a little bit and um, tell us a little bit about how long you've been at JCPS, how long you've been at McFerrin, and uh, anything else you'd like to tell us? Sure. So my name is Lauren Caleb Zakim. I'm a school counselor at McFerrin Preparatory Academy in Jefferson County. I've been there for, uh, I think this is my eighth year as a school counselor, and I was a kindergarten teacher at Wheatley Elementary for seven years before that. Cool. Awesome. Well, welcome. Um, all right, so I've got some questions for you. So first off, how are you handling being an elementary school counselor during this COVID-19 pandemic? Well, you know, it is definitely challenging. My kiddos do not have the technology easily ready for them. Um, and at my school, I'm fortunate enough to have a co-counselor because McFerrin is such a large school. There's two counselors and I primarily work with the kindergarten, first and second graders. So they really are not able to be as independent as some of the older kids to navigate the technology, to reach out to us using the technology. So we're doing the best that we can. And just I think that the main goal for us that we've realized is just to know that we're here, that your counselors care about you that we're here for a phone call or an email, or we can set up a Google Meet or whatever it is that they need. We're just trying to be available. Gotcha. Um, what do you think your kids and families need from you? And um, where's the best time, where's the time best spent during this unprecedented time? Okay. I think that what they need from us right now and from me as a counselor is just to be a listening ear. Um, I'm really not trying to add anything to their plate. I'm really just trying to remove whatever barriers I can from a distance. Um, when I do talk to parents and I've been doing things like um, working on getting the Chromebooks set up for them or just checking in to see what their technology needs are, I always make sure I ask them just how are you doing? Um, how are your kids? How are the kids doing? Do you want to put the kids on the phone and talk to me for a minute? Um, like I said, I'm just really trying to be available and be a listening ear to them and whatever it may be. And a lot of them are just like me. I have a son at home who's over here watching a movie while I'm trying to get some work done. And um, they're all stuck at home with their kids and just trying to navigate it the best that they can. So I think that's mostly what it is. What they need is just a listening ear and to know that we're here. Yeah, that's um, that's really good. So you mentioned Caleb, your four year old. Mm -hmm. um, so you are a super counselor and a super mom at the same time. How is that going for you? How are you balancing that? Um, I think that it's just trying to get 15 minutes of work done and then you tackle whatever you need to do with the kiddo. Um, try to get him focused on something. It is definitely difficult. Uh, the days that I have him, I'm a little bit less focused on the school stuff and the days that I don't have him, I'm able to really get a lot of it done. It's more just um, getting the work done when you can get it done yeah. and help him understand. We just had a conversation this morning when I told him I needed to get on the phone for a little bit. I said, you know why mommy works? And he's like, why? I was like, well, I have to help kids and I get to help families. And so that's why I do what I do. He said, why? And I said, and I also have to make money. And so I had to explain, we had a little economics <laughs> conversation this morning. <laughs> Economics with four-year-olds. Yes, could, I could, exactly. Uh, He's like, do you have to have money to buy trees? I was like, well, no, not unless you want to plant them. So he had lots of funny questions. So that is awesome. Yeah, just trying That's to balance awesome. it all is definitely a challenge, but yeah, I'm working it out. Good. Um, for our uh, viewers out there, I also have four-year-old twins and a three-year-old, and um, I can relate with everything that, that Lauren has said. Um, balancing work and trying to be a good dad is uh, it is difficult, um, mm -hmm. but my suggestion would be to be easy with yourself. Um, yes. It's really, really easy to, you know, say that you're not, you're not doing a good job at either, um, but just remember that these are unprecedented times and yes. um, like I said, be easy with yourself and, and know that you're doing the very best that you can. And, um, you know, that's all we can ask. Exactly. I listened to something recently that talked about parents and how we try. Look, there he is making an appearance right now. Hi, Kayla. Hi. <laughs> Talking about how we can't be expert parents, workers, homeschoolers, all at the same time. So just like you said, Amy, we just have to make it easy and do the best that we can. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 I 
right, give me five more minutes, Bubba. No. Oh, well, he okay, just fine. might be in on our conversation. Thanks, love. You're fine. Um, like I said, I can completely relate. Um, all right, so Lauren, you've done some special things at your school that can help other counselors across Kentucky. Um, one of those things is that you've started an advisory council. Um, tell us about how that started, the format of your meetings, and, and how that's been helpful for your comprehensive school. <laughs> sure. So my advisory council, we actually really just got it going this year. Um, and that's again with the help of my co-counselor, Heather Haynes. Um, we have done a couple Heather's meetings. Heather's awesome, by the way. I'm She's awesome. I'm going to interview with her. Yes. <laughs> so we've had a couple meetings and we've uh, reached out to community people. We've reached out to former McFerrin staff who understand our school. Um, Jean Shackelford, my former um, partner in crime, she was, uh, she's been on, on our advisory council. And so pretty much what we do is we just tell them the real deal of what we're doing. We show them the data that we see from our program. We gave them our baseline data on attendance and behavior and um, kids' needs and our needs assessment. And then we just kind of ask them, what do you guys think? What should we do with this information? And what can we do to help you guys? It's been really good to get uh, support from the parents, especially because they, uh, they want us to be more present on social media and virtually. And so here we go. The world has given us that opportunity. And so we've really amped up our virtual game and um, got a website going and we have a classroom on Google. And so um, it's been really good. I think that they don't, they didn't realize what we were doing and what our time is really spent doing and what the numbers really show. And so it's kind of, oh, it's, it's been eye opening for our participants for sure. That's fantastic. That's actually great feedback. Um, one of the one of the goals um, for me is to help school counselors communicate their role uh, more with their with with their schools, not only within their schools but also within their school communities. So that sounds like you are you are doing that. That's the purpose of your advisory council, and it sounds like you've gotten some really great information that's helped you grow your program and improve it. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. That's that's fantastic. Thank you. Um, one of my favorite events that I've been able to be a part part of for the last two years has been your parent night that you held at McFerrin on bullying. Can you tell us a little bit about that event? Yes, it's one of my favorite events too, and I appreciate you being a part of it, Damien. Um, this is the second year that we've done it, and it was actually spearheaded by my principal, Desiree Bush. She wanted to um, just kind of tackle this bullying issue head on, and she wanted us to be the ones at the elementary level to post something like this. And so uh, she got, she kind of just put it in our hands and we ran with it last year, myself and my um, family resource center coordinator, Michelle Houston, we worked last year too. Shout out Houston. to Michelle. She's also yes. awesome. <laughs> She's wonderful. Love her. Um, big partner in my, in my career for sure. Um, he and I just used the relationships that we have with Centerstone and um, Peace Hospital and, and you, Damien, and um, with JCPS school psychologists. And we just reached out to see who would be interested in partnering with us and have and being a part of our event where we tackle just questions that were accumulated by families and kids surrounding mental health and bullying. And um, so last year was our first year, and this year was our second year. And so the kids, they formulated the questions. We asked them what they wanted to know, what parents wanted to know. And so then we just got our questions together and we got our panel together. And it's been a really great event and we get great feedback from it. Um, the parents are always really, really, really happy to attend. Um, just next year, it's just about trying to get the numbers up even more to get more people to come. But everyone loves it whenever we do. Um, whenever we do it, we get great feedback and I love it too. That's awesome. Uh, pro tip that I learned from you and from that event is also if you have EL, um, if you have English learners at your school, um, offer interpreters that evening. I had a great conversation with um, with a gentleman and uh, and his interpreter, and we were able to learn so much from him and from that opportunity. So, um, so great job providing that service. Good. Thank you. Yep. All right, Lauren. Um, I know you've got to get back to Caleb. Um, thank you for your <laughs> thank you for your time this morning. Um, I appreciate you. Um, is there anything you want to, to any any last bit of advice that you want to give to elementary school counselors at this time? Sure. Well, thank you, Damien, for um, taking the time to talk with me. I think that how you talked about taking it easy on ourselves is also very important right now. Um, my co-counselor and I have been 
looking at what we need to be doing during this time. And I think as things roll out and parents and kids are just getting acclimated to this world that we're in right now for who knows how many more weeks, that we just have to be available and supportive and not add to the stress and not add to the stress on ourselves. You know, when we're there in the brick and mortar buildings, that's what we do. As counselors, we are a listening ear. We are a smiling face. We are a hug when they need it. And I think that even though we are doing this from a distance, we can still exhibit that same energy and that same love, um, even from our dining room tables like we are now. So um, that's what I would say. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Lauren. Have a great Thanks, day. Thanks, Amy, and you too. All right. Take care. Bye. All right. Welcome, counselors. I'm here with Sarah Aiken. Sarah, will you please introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Sarah Aiken. I am a school counselor at Indian Hills Elementary School in Hopkinsville, Kentucky. Um, I have been an elementary school counselor for five years. Uh, prior to that, I was a school counselor at Christian County High School, um, where I worked with the same class um, from freshman to their senior year. And then prior to that, I worked five years in our local mental health center. Um, I was a crisis um, counselor. I worked with individuals, adults, and children that were uh, experiencing mental health crises. Nice. You've got great experience. Yeah. Tell us, um, how are you handling being an elementary school counselor during, during this unprecedented time? Um, it's, it's very strange. Um, as I was saying before we started recording, um, I actually am here at school today. I needed to do just a couple of things in my office, and it's just myself and my assistant principal here today. And we were just talking about how strange it is being here in the building. Our parking lot is empty. Um, it's so quiet. Um, and what we would really be doing on this Friday, um, we were supposed to be having our K Prep award ceremony uh, tonight, you know. Um, honoring the students that uh, scored proficient or distinguished on their K prep test last year. And something that we've started is we did a slumber party for the students where they could actually stay here um, at school. And so we would have been planning that, um, doing all of that fun thing. I am thankful that I don't have to stay up all night tonight <laughs> doing that. But it's just so strange just knowing that, you know, our students, um, you know, don't have those opportunities. But honestly, I've just really tried to stay positive. I've tried to stay connected um, to our students, to our parents, to our staff. And, you know, even personally, just staying really connected, you know, to, to my friends, my family, you know, during this time. Gotcha. Thank you. How do you how do you stay connected with those those families and, and students right now? Um, honestly, I've been trying to stay connected to them several different ways. Um, I have a Google Classroom that I have set up where I post um, some social and emotional learning lessons, um, videos for them to do. Um, I also post them on our school social media pages, um, as well as our parents are really connected to our class dojo. So um, I send things, you know, messages to them as well um, as to our students. Um, you know, just any way that I can connect to them is what I've been trying uh, trying to do. Because just that connection and that relationship is so important, not only always, but really during this time, making sure um, that students and parents feel connected. Um, I shared with somebody uh, earlier in this week that, you know, after we come out of all of this, um, I just want my students and my parents to know that I want them to realize how that I made them feel um, yes. during this time instead so good. of yep. what they were learning. Yeah, yeah. Um, I just talked with about 25 different kids from all over the state, and that's the one thing that they really said that they miss is that connection um, yes. and those relationships. And they said they talked about the value of, of counselors calling them um, or hosting virtual meetings and just, just being able to see them or talk with them and um, kind of cheer them up. Uh, so so thank you for, for all that you're doing. That's awesome. Absolutely. One thing I did yesterday, this, is, um, I, this was so fun. I found these little cute I wish I had one with me right now these little cute signs that said like I welly miss you and it was a copy of like a well with, like a little heart on it or I miss you very much and it was like a big berry and so I took 
um, I stood outside yesterday and just held them in front of the camera and took different pictures. And I sent them to um, every kid in the school through our class dojo app. That and is amazing. So cool. The, the reactions that I just got from those, you know, and even though it was going to their parents' phones, parents were saying, Oh my gosh, you know, Deacon loved this or, you know, Emmy loves seeing you. Thank, thank you so much. You know, it, so just those small little things that let them know that you're thinking about them. Yeah, I think that's such an important point that it doesn't have to be some huge, you know, we're, we're going to set this, this huge, Thing like that it can be something as small as, as sending a picture um i think that's, that's wonderful thank you for sharing um now sarah when i think about um, all i know about your experience over at indian hills i think about the different parent nights that you do um, i know that you have a student advisory council i know that you um, that you do just so many different things with mindfulness and um, social emotional skills but one thing that our elementary counselors have not heard from other counselors is how they set up small groups and how they handle that. So can you talk a little bit about your small groups? Sure. Um, something that I do with my small groups is um, I kind of wrap them into a lunch bunch. Um, so what I do is um, every week I send out an email um, to my teachers and letting them know which um, grade levels I'm going to do lunch bunch with. And on that day, and I let them know, here's our focus for the week. Um, friendship, decision making, whatever, whatever the focus is. Um, and then I have them choose two students from their homeroom that might need that certain skill um, to do that. Um, and then I give them a special invitation uh, with a lanyard on it. I deliver it to their class that morning and let them wear that invitation um, it just says that you're invited to lunch bunch with Miss Aiken. I will pick you up from the cafeteria. And so um, what I do is I bring them to my office and we usually um, have, we eat, they eat their lunch and I do some sort of lesson with them. Usually it's just a 10 to 15 minute lesson and some little activity that they can do, you know, with that. Um, and then from there, sometimes I just choose the students that I want to participate in that group. Um, I also do, um, I have a group of girls that um, I have followed uh, since I've been here. Um, they have kind of are involved in some of the girl drama. And so um, I do a small group with them um, as well, um, kind of talking about girl sort of things. Um, so it's really kind of, I kind of pick and choose, honestly, sometimes based off of what teachers say that they need um, as well. So that's kind of how I do that. We talk about being data-driven counselors and, and asking teachers what's going on is one way of, of doing that. So kudos to yes. you once again. Um, thank uh, you for everything some, that you do. It's awesome. Something also that I look at is we have we really have started looking at our attendance data as well. And so I've been trying to pull in some of our students um, that have some chronic absenteeism. Yes. And yep. I'm trying to hone in on and you know at the elementary school level it really is kind of different because sometimes it's it's the parents that are the problem that the kids not making it to school um so i really try to work with some of our chronic um absent students you know just trying to find out what's going on and trying to get them connected to something here at school again it's all about that connection for sure for sure okay sarah um what advice do you have for elementary counselors right now, and really any counselor right now, um, what advice do you have for them during this pandemic and then when they get back to their schools? Absolutely. Um, one thing that I really um, just keep focusing on is, you know, more now than ever, we really need to be focusing on that social and emotional learning. That social and emotional learning is always a priority, but I feel like now is even more a priority. And since our kind of way of life is a little bit different right now, you know, um, we don't have K prep testing going on. That's something that I'm in charge of in my building. So since we don't have that, I can really focus more on social and emotional learning um, than I have maybe in the past. Um, but just providing the other outlets uh, for that learning, whether it's, you know, lessons or um, videos or whatever that may be, um, just 
really focusing on that and making that very intentional, making that a priority um, during this time. But also just providing some fun things for your for your students, you know, to do um, this next week. Um, we're going to be doing a wellness challenge. Um, I'm really excited about that. We're going to be focusing on part of that as uh, physical health and mental health during that challenge. So I'm really excited about um, doing that. Um, we also did a kindness, um, a kindness week. So encouraging our kids, you know, to do to do random acts of kindness. Um, so just Love trying that. to find, yeah, just trying to find other ways to connect, you know, to our kids instead of you know just always talking about emotions or feelings, but giving them some other opportunities as well. Um, but like I said, just I think the most important thing for for all counselors right now is just that finding that connection with your students, with your parents. And really, we don't need to forget about our staff. You know, our some of our staff are really struggling right now with, you know, not being in school, not being in that normal. And so really just finding ways to connect with them, um, I think is really important too. Yeah, I think this is a real opportunity for, for school counselors to show that um, they're here for families, for students, but also for staff, like you said. I think one way that they can do that is just by um, writing, you know, sending handwritten notes to their staff. Um, yes. there, there are there's so many different ways that you can connect with them to show, show them that you care, that you see them, that you um, are thinking of them. Uh, and I think this is the perfect time to do it. Absolutely. Um, Sarah, Sarah, thank you for your time today. I really appreciate it. Um, I appreciate you finding the best spot that you could. <laughs> on a windy day out in Christian County. So, um, so thank you again. Thank you.